Today we're going to be talking about some relays. Good fun. The first one will be the solid state bypass timer. And where I would use this myself would be where I would want to bypass a low pressure controller to make sure I had a smooth unit start up. Meaning if it was extremely cold outside and you would be in danger of tripping the low pressure switch during startup. So as we know the suction pressure will often dip very low then rebound as the machine runs. We don't want to trip a switch every time we have a startup. So this switch will allow us to bypass that safety for a certain period of time while our unit starts up. So let's take a look and see how it is wired up. Just like we have our diagram up here on the display sheet, we're going to draw a diagram and put our relay right in the middle of it so you can see where it would be. We'll be using 24 volts on this relay, although it will go all the way up to 288 volts. Uh, so says the instruction sheet. We're going to be using 24 because most of my controls are 24. And we're going to be using our Y1 signal going to the contactor. But you can use any 24 volt hot signal that you need to for this controller. But for me, most of the time it's going to be common and Y1 coming into this area. So let me draw it up and I can explain how it works. As you see, the wires coming in will be 24 volts Y1 and the 24 volt common. Now these have many colors they've been represented as in different units. Y1, a lot of time is yellow, but I've seen it as blue, black, all sorts of different colors. Common has been blue, brown, black throughout the years on different pieces of equipment. As these come in, we'll see where they go on this control. Let me draw it out and we'll take it a step further. We have our common wire running around to one side, this is a coil, the contactor coil in this particular case, but could be a coil for any relay depending on your application. Then we have our Y1 going here and to the low pressure switch, then coming out. There may be more switches, maybe a high pressure switch as well, but for this case we're trying to bypass a low pressure switch. So we'll put this bad boy right here. There's our contactor. You know our common can go here, our Y1 on this side, and that's our contactor coil and that's how those wires will be entering the contactor. The rest of the diagram is shown now. As you can see, we have a common coming up into terminal number three on the relay. And then we have one side of our Y1 before the low pressure switch coming into number two. And then on number one, it's going back to the other side. Let's take a closer look at that. When power is brought in on Y1, it starts the timer which is set between six seconds and eight minutes and for that time period whatever you choose it'll allow power to pass through here bypassing that switch after the timer runs out it cuts this flow off it goes back to the low pressure switch as long as it's closed it'll keep flowing to the contactor if it is not it will stay open and stop the call so we will have a certain time period where our voltage can flow from Y1 all the way to the contactor uninterrupted by the low pressure switch. After that time period from 6 seconds to 8 minutes, it will then be at the liberty of the switch. So that is how the bypass timer is wired in and one application you can use it for in air conditioning. <laughs> 